So we're going to demo our awesome terrain shader. And I've got a Mayan RenderMan Studio session here. You can see we're in the RenderMan menu. I've deliberately cut off uh, the rest of the UI because we don't really need it. And um, it'll make the video more focused and smaller in size. So I've got a piece of terrain geometry. So I'm just going to build it up from scratch. So I'm going to hit tab in my node editor and do RenderMan Shader. You can drop that in. And we could also get that if we go into panels, panel, hypershade, and we go under renderman shaders, and we can drop in renderman shader here. That's what I did. And we can see the type is renderman shader, but I just prefer to do that, um, just that node editor. So let's call it terrain. And we want to load our SLO file. So I'm just going to go open. And in terrain, we're going to load the SLO. And then we get our user interface, our UI. And I'm just going to do a spot assign material to selection. Now, before I do anything, because we're going to go through a lot of these parameters, there's a lot of them, uh, I'm just going to hit render. Um, so I'm going to kick off an interactive render. And just to show you what we get out of the box. And... Uh, I did that by going into my RenderMan tool menu. And if you didn't see that, you know, you can just go RenderMan, IPR render. That's essentially what I did. So here you can see that, um, although we want to tweak a lot of it, the beauty of the shader is just like out of the box. We've got a ton of stuff going on. You didn't have to do anything. And we've got, you know, rocks, uh, this rock bombing technique. This is sort of this random procedural way of placing rocks. We've got this kind of moss thing which needs a lot of tweaking, um, but it's sort of green, mossy areas. It's kind of a little turquoise, so we'll play with that. And sort of this cracked earth and these really cool procedural dunes. So you can see where the color desaturates uh, up. We get these really cool dunes. So we're going to walk through that step by step, but I, I just wanted to just hit a quick render um, before sort of going through all these boring parameters. So let's run through them. So the render view, uh, we're still updating this. But basically, you render the beauty, but you can have a lot of different passes. Like if you just want to view, for example, your specular map or your occlusion or anything like that, you just select it from here and it'll make the change right away live. Um, so you get really good feedback. We're still updating that. We'll have that in the next version of the shader to make sure we get all the parameters. So the color section is just um, your either your surface map or you can use like a plain color. I'm using this cracked earth color texture that ships with our shader. So by default, it's in there and it's in the textures. There's no full path here. So you just have to make sure your Maya project path, um, wherever that's set, you got to have this textures uh, directory branched off of there. Um, so you might need to copy that over or by default, if you, um, if you expand our shader and you'll see that textures directory, just point your Maya project or one directory up. This UV repeat, if you put it onto one, you can see how the map changes a lot and we get sort of these bigger features. So if I want to repeat the UV, it's basically scaling um, that color texture map. And we had it at 20, so we can see, see all these kind of like cracked earth textures if you put it to 10, these features are just going to be a lot bigger. Uh, so we'll kind of have like these bigger cracks. Uh, but I just have it at 20 by default. 10 is actually pretty cool because you get these cracks are just kind of a lot bigger. So your surface color, if you don't have a map, it's going to use a surface color. So if I remove the map, it's going to be white. But if you do have a map, this actually does something different. It tints it. So if I just do... HSV and I take the value down that's just gaining it all the way down uh, but if I want to do like a RGB if I want to tint it see how it's tinting the map so if, even if you have a map you can just do some live uh, kind of tinting controls so that's in there and then by default keep it at white and it doesn't do anything and you can also darken uh, depending on the height of the displacement you can kind of darken uh, that map based on that so you can play around with these settings but uh, let's say I put them both to zero. We get some different results. We basically get some different darkening based on the overall displacement. So if you want to darken those inside the cracks, play with those. Uh, the diffuse section. So 
Uh, diffuse is basically what people think of color, but color is independent of the diffuse shading model. Like you could have Lambertian diffuse or an air diffuse. You could have, instead of diffuse, you could have a subsurface light transport, in which case you wouldn't be doing diffuse. Uh, so that's why we like to separate it out. And here we have Lambert and Oranair. Currently, Lambert is just hooked up. In the future, we'll put an Oranair diffuse, so that has an actual roughness in it. So that's pretty nice. Indirect diffuse. So this does your basically your bounce, your GI. The it's off by default because it takes a really long time to render. And if you do the tooltip, you can see that it says secondary diffuse or bounce or GI must have attribute max diffuse depth set to two or greater. So that's under attributes, render man, manage attributes. And that'll pop up this menu. And you'd have to go down to max diffuse depth. And you can use some even do max specular depth. You can add those, close. And you'll see at the top of your shader, you'll get those by default to one. And if you want to use indirect diffuse, those have to be set to two or greater for your bounce. So we can close some of these. Specular globals. Uh, I just turned spec off by default. Um, we'll take a look at, we can have different spec controls inside this kind of moss area and outside of it. I'm just going to have that off because it's mainly, uh, we're looking at uh, our diffuse here. Our displacements, this does displacement. So you can have uh, basically displacement maps. And this all this map text, this is just a texture map um, to mask all the displacements, as it says in the tooltip. And the disk map one, if I take it out and put it back in, you really need to do like a final render, not an IPR or a real time uh, re render to really see the displacements changing. But here you can see that, you know, we've got really cool displacements inside this cracked earth. And then I have this really high frequency displacement, uh, which is just basically a noise. And I put that at zero. But you can use any maps in your displacement. So go ahead and make some cool maps in Photoshop, pop them in here. And you can do dis different displacement mapping so that if you don't know what displacement mapping is, it changes the geometry and it creates these different features um, that add uh, features to the geometry. So Dune, so these are pretty cool. So this is what we have here. As I mentioned before, it gets desaturated and it creates this procedural. So it's like this procedural terrain. There's no textures. So if we turn that off, you'll notice it's very plain in here. It's just got the basic geometry that we see in Maya. We turn on the Dune switch and we can change the feature size. It's at 16,000, the contrast, the gain. So that's how high it goes. If we put it to one, we don't really see it. If we have it to 12, look in here, we've got this really nice, everywhere it's kind of desaturated a little bit. We get these cool dune features. Um, and then there's a color desat switch. So if you leave it, you still get the dunes, but they don't really, you don't really notice them. They don't change color. So I like kind of putting that switch on <coughs> and it basically desaturates them. As you go higher, as you enter the dune, it changes the color. And you can control that if we go back to that dune section. It can have a desatch scale. So if I put it to one, you can really see where the dunes are and it really desaturates it. But 2.25 is a lot more subtle. We can put it at 0.5 just to show it off a little bit more for this example. Uh, although, you know, that might be too much in uh, realistic. So I'm going to turn off the moss. I'm going to turn off the rocks. Now you can really see these dunes. So this is great. Just, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do this. But with our shader, it's just you just switch it on and off. It's all there for you. And it just expose the parameters that you would really want in this. So rock bombing. So bombing is just a really cool procedural technique. Uh, I've created some really... Um, basic looking rock textures. So if you see this clump of rocks, that's what I created in Photoshop. And that's my texture here. Again, this ships with the shader. So if you drop it in, uh, it randomly rotates and places them throughout your scene. So this is great for like a randomized terrain. Uh, your displacement game, then it displaces up. <coughs> and we'll look at some final renders after this uh, to see what the final render looks like because this is pretty low quality, but that's how high you want to displace your rocks. So <coughs> rock displacements can be quite high. And then <coughs> also your UV repeat is the same um, it sort of scales those rocks. And there's also this layer. So if I do one, you basically see one giant rock there. No, there's a bunch of them in here, but it doesn't really give you a lot of, lot of rocks. But if I increase it to 10, 
it starts kind of distributing randomly across the scene. So the great thing about this, again, this is one texture map, is one clump of the rock, but now you can really control it. 20, 40, now I've got rocks everywhere. Um, so this is just a really handy procedural feature, and you can put any of your own textures for rocks. You can change that up, but the algorithm stays the same. See how it's just random? It rotates it. It looks pretty cool. And then we've got <coughs> a bunch of other, um, I'm not going to go through every single parameter, otherwise this video will get really long, uh, but a lot of different parameters. Just play with all of these. Um, there's Some of them are self-explanatory. If they're not, shoot us an email at info at lollipopshaders.com. Uh, as we update this shader, we'll put a lot more tool tips up in here. If you're not using a texture like I am for the rocks, you can define um, basically some colors, um, just some solid colors in here. Or you can do a texture like I'm doing in here. And then you can also do a hue shift. So that means that it just changes the actual uh, color of the rocks procedurally. That's what proc means procedurally. So I turn it on and uh, this is pretty offensive, but uh, you can just see uh, how it works. So these ones are purple, these ones are green. Now I didn't, I didn't change the textures at all. This is all procedural. It's an algorithm happening inside the shader. Uh, so I'm going to turn that off. They're all roughly the same color. But now you can play with the scale of the U-shift from 1 to 100 or more. <coughs> and it actually changes how much that color changes. But I'm going to turn it off for now, but you can see it working there. Then we've got our moss. So our moss is a texture. And I just did this kind of greenish turquoise texture in Photoshop. Um, our UV repeat is the same. If I put it at 1, you can kind of see a low resolution texture in there. So I'm going to put it at 20 to give it a little bit more fidelity. You can change the spec roughness of the moss. So if you actually have moss, your you want your specular response to be different. So it's kind of a layered feature. And then same with your gain. Now this is pretty cool. You got no moss on dune switch, moss only on dune switch. So what does that do? So if I turn that off and I turn this one on, we have moss only on the dunes. So where we have our dunes defined, remember these guys? Well, we're going to only distribute moss on there. But if we do it the other way around, if we do that, we have moss everywhere. But if we do no moss on dune switch, it takes these kind of cool sand dunes and removes the moss from there. So it just gives you more detail there. You can do the color tint on the moss just like we did on the surface color. <coughs> and then your actual displacement text. Uh, I put that high frequency noise in here so it just has this really high frequency noise. Again, you're going to have to do a final render. Um, to see what this looks like, <coughs> especially with displacement. And finally, our Y grad. So I've defined sort of vertically, I've defined some gradients um, to fade in and out. And just to show you how that works, I've just put in, and depending on your, your terrain, you're just gonna have to play with these numbers. Um, so Y, so that's the vertical Y grad, fade in and fade in. Um, so I'm fading in at negative 80, that's where I start, I fade and end at negative 50. So again, you're just gonna have to play with these, imagine these kind of on a vertical scale, all the way up to 40. So I'm going negative 80 to 40, assuming that the ground plane is at zero. Anything below that goes negative and above that goes positive. And what happens if I switch off the Y grad MOS switch? So the whole purpose of defining this Y gradient is for these procedural things like the MOS, it's gonna go everywhere. But if I turn that on, as well as a Y grad color. See how the color is the same everywhere? Well, I've defined a vertical gradient, so the stuff higher up is gonna get a little bit different color, and the moss is just it's just gonna eliminate it from the higher areas. Um, so there's a lot of kind of neat things you can do with that. And oh yeah, one thing going back to the moss, we have this moss color tint. I was saying it's a little bit too kind of turquoise and green, so if we add a bunch of yellow, you know, we get a more kind of earthy, uh, earthy color of the moss and then you know we can add a little red to mix it in so we don't have that kind of turquoise and blue so a lot of parameters there go ahead and play with all of these and let's take a look at more of like a f uh, just another final render because I'm doing these quick preview IPRs here but any questions email us at info at lollipopshaders.com and I'll bring up this final render so I've just dropped it into my it here <coughs> and here's just some demo renders uh, we were using for another show, but you can see they're just more final renders. So you can see a nice desaturated moss and that nice cracked earth. We got our dunes in there. This was on a larger scale. 
it's a little too punchy here but you know you can see just kind of some better final renders on that so happy rendering with this and let us know if you have any questions